Hey VTubers, today you and I are gonna have a chat about View 3 Suspense. And I'm gonna split this in two videos or two major sections. One is going to be asset kernels data loading from an API using View 3 Suspense. And then we're gonna be doing the same thing with components, which is a must know if you're building an SPA. And before we take a deep dive into how to use Vue 3 Suspense, let's make sure that we know what Suspense even does. Okay, so Suspense is a boundary inside an application that governs how asynchronous content is being loaded. What that means is basically, uh, Vue 3 Suspense knows how to listen for any promises uh, and is going to show fallback content or think loading messages until promises have been resolved. When promises are resolved, Vue 3 Suspense is going to show the actual content. So let's talk about this boundary. What is a boundary? I think uh, kind of the easiest analogy I can use is my hand. Let's talk about my hand as an application. So, you know, maybe the whole hand can be a suspense boundary. Maybe each of the fingers can be a suspense boundary, boundary or every finger individually, or maybe even every finger by the knuckle, you know, every knuckle can be a suspense boundary on its own. So what does that mean? Let's say I need to grow a nail. <laughs> That's my asynchronously loaded content. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna choose my index finger nail because it's convenient. Um, so if I need to load this one and my whole hand is a suspense boundary, then that means that my loading of the finger or, or the fingernail is going to be a promise. When the finger is sufficiently grown, well, loaded, then I need to show the content. So if the whole hand is a suspense boundary, then it's going to wait for the fingernail to show, and then it's gonna show the content. So imagine this, my hand is loading, and then the finger is growing, and poof, the content is loaded. So obviously, as you could tell, nothing is going to be loaded in one um, suspense boundary until uh, every piece of it has been loaded. So how do we fix that? Obviously we can keep one major suspense boundary for the whole app, but then we can add subsections, right? Sub boundaries. So let's say every finger can be a boundary. I'm gonna concentrate on my index finger for now. So let's say my, my index finger is a boundary on its own and because it has suspense tags. I'm gonna show you how to use suspense tags in a bit. And my, my, um, my nail needs to load. So in this case, because this finger is a suspense library, here's how this content is going to load, okay? So no hand and the hand, but no finger, okay? Waiting for the fingernail to load, to grow, and then poof, then I see the whole hand, okay? I can go to more granular uh, suspense boundary setup and I can say that my last knuckle is going to be a boundary so if I'm loading my hand and I need to load my fingernail then the hand is going to show like this poof, and then without this like this ah, whoa whoa and then finally poof, when the nail is loaded it shows the nail so this is progressive application loading it's incredibly important, especially if you're building SBA single page applications, because you want your users to see some of the content. You know, that's way better than nothing. Footer, right? You don't see the footer unless you scrolled way down, right? Or the hamburger menu, you don't see that unless you clicked on the menu. So that can be deprioritized. The beauty of it, uh, some of the deprioritized content is not going to have to be shown right away. All right. Now we are going to take a look at asynchronous data loading. Obviously, nowadays, any data loading is asynchronous, almost, right? So obviously, if we contact an API, it's going to be an asynchronous call. I'm going to use Fetch API. I'm going to fetch some content from a remote service and load it. Simple as that. So why do I need uh, any new APIs? Why do I need suspense? Because I want to manage how this is done, and I also want to use um, kind of UI hints. I want to show loading messages and you know whatnot, right? So let's take a look. 
For starters, I'm going to use our regular view application. Uh, and to the right, you're going to see the browser, uh, which just shows the Hello World application. To our left is our Hello World application. So my first thing that I want to do is create a new component. I'm going to name it users because I'm going to load a number of users. And to do that, I need to replace the Hello World component. I'm going to use my own users. I also don't need this message, so I'm going to remove it. Okay, at this moment, my application is going to fail because I saved and user components does not exist yet. I'm going to create one, users.view, and it's going to do nothing. Okay, I just fixed that problem to the right. I'm going to quick start this. And now let's start with JavaScript. This component is named users. And let's start with the setup function. If you're new to the setup function, I recommend you take a look at my video on View 3 Composition API. It's going to explain everything setup does and how you can use it. Okay, let's get back to this one. All right, so I'm, I said I'm going to be using the Fetch API. Fetch API is asynchronous. So let's say users response is a Fetch API. And then I'm going to load some data. Okay. And I said it's asynchronous, so this needs to be a wait. And if this guy is a wait, then setup needs to be async. So let's take a look at what happens next. Now, user response is going to be a JSON object. So I need to convert that. Okay, const um, users is going to be a wait users response dot JSON. All right, cool. And finally, I need to return some users. This is almost going to work. Because I use setup, I need to add reactivity to the application, right? I cannot return just a plain object. I need to use some kind of refs, right? So let's use refs in this example. So const users is a ref, and initially it's going to be just null, like nothing has ever happened to users. Uh, but I also have this conflict here because I can't have two users. So this one is users.value, yes. So user.value is user respond JSON, return users. This is, this looks okay, I think. Well, I need ref. And as you know, ref comes from view. So finally, in our template, we are going to create a div. So this is going to be a loop. I'm going to loop through my users with v4. So here's what I know. I know users is going to be an array and users is going to be an object, the response that I get from the server. And inside the object, I have the data key. And finally, because this div is going to repeat a few times, I need a key. Each key is my user.id. So this guy, this user, user.id. And now let's add some content. Uh, so we have user.first name and user dot last name. Okay, this is some content. And I think I'm ready to save this. Before I do, you see this wavy red line. This means that my ID doesn't know about some of the view three features. And I'm sure you know of fragments. Now this basically means you no longer need to have a single a uh, root node inside a template. You have as many as, as you want, basically an array of root nodes. And it's very liberating that you don't have to have a container for every view component. And my ID doesn't know that yet. I mean, that support is probably going to get soon inside our IDEs. Some smart people are working on it. Okay, let's save this guy. And oh, nothing is happening. So let's see why. Oh, component is missing template or a render function. What? Oh, you don't have a suspense boundary. Hmm, where do I put a suspense boundary? I talked about my hand, right? And you know where I put the suspense boundary? In the parent component, somewhere up that tree. And I'm gonna use the app.view component that is the parent component of the users component app.view users right here, okay? And that's suspense, simple, right? Okay, that's users, and then I need to close. I'm not gonna worry about formatting right now because I have auto formatting. 
and this doesn't work. Oh, it does work! I thought suspense would not work if I don't import it, but it actually worked! That was a live surprise on video. So suspense would initially come from, just so you know, from view. And then we would need to create a component suspense. But looks like view core team is smarter than that and we don't need to import suspense. I, you know, hey, I like that. Uh, if you're a, a view three core team maintainer, guys, I like that. This is good. Okay, this just worked and now what should I do with it? I promise that suspense can show a fallback component or a loading message. And I wanna show that to you right now. Let's, let's go. Obviously to show fallback and a national final component or message, I'm gonna use templates. Template, okay, I'm gonna have two of them. One is gonna be the default and that's gonna be the users. Let's close this. And the other template is going to be fallback. See how I referenced this with hashtags? I almost feel like I'm writing a tweet, but it's a good feeling to have. And now I'm gonna show loading your amazing users. And <laughs> semicolon, no, three dots. Okay, let's reload, let's see what's happening. Oh, loading your amazing users. There you go, boom. I'm seeing that ugly message. Uh, actually, um, it goes to the side. So let's create a new div. And <laughs> reload. Loading your amazing users, George and Janet and Eve, they're all here. How did you like that? Are you, are you following with me? Uh, this is, should be very easy and I hope I'm doing this in the right pace so you can track. If no, let me know in the, in the comments below and I'll make sure uh, that I go easier for you. Okay, now, now our goal next is to enhance this asynchronous loading uh, because, hey, sometimes we happen to run into issues. Maybe we are offline, maybe, maybe the uh, API has returned an error, I don't know. So why don't we try to kind of grab control over that? So for that, I'm gonna go to users and let's think about errors, right? So the easiest thing I can do is just create an error reference. So const error is going to be a new ref. I'm gonna call it null again. And so how do I catch those errors with a try catch block? Okay, so right here and then catch some error and then that value is that E. I also need to return the reference. And finally, right here, let's show that error. Div, then this is gonna be VF error, and then show error right here. And this works just fine because I haven't triggered an error. So how could I simulate an error? I know. I can go offline, wireless, turn Wi-Fi off. And because I also have a wired connection right over here, I'm gonna... This cord is now out. I am officially offline. All right, let's give this a try now. And nothing? Okay, I expected nothing because I'm offline. And woo! I see some red stuff in my console, but why? I should be getting this beautiful error message inside the view. But you know what? I have a suspense boundary. And I bet that error was caught before it got to the component because that promise never resolved. I need to fix that and I happen to know exactly how to. I talked about suspense being a boundary for asynchronous loading of data, components, anything, okay? Um, now that we have a suspense boundary, we also need an error boundary. So error boundary is going to 
capture any errors and we're going to be able to tell our applications what to do in case of an error. Follow me through this next example because I think whenever you use suspense, you should be thinking about failed responses, about failures. And this one was very easy. This one was just me being offline. Let's try to capture that. Okay, so I'm going to go to app.view and I know that I used suspense over here, but I can also do something else. I'm gonna create a setup function over here and inside the setup function, I'm gonna create a new ref, just like I did previously with error. And that ref is gonna be null. Okay. I'm gonna make sure that ref is loaded. Import ref from view. Okay, now I need to obviously return the error. But before this is successful, I need to make sure that I'm capturing the error. So for that, I can use a new API called on error captured. Okay, and that's gonna be a function that accepts an error, just like throw and catch, you know, catch accepts an error. And in this case, I'm gonna create an error function. I'm gonna say error.value is going to be E. So on error captured also comes from view right here. And now I need to show the error. I'm gonna show it right under the image. And I'm, I'm gonna be so lazy that I'm going to copy this same error handler or message right here, because it's the same thing. If there is an error, show it. I'm gonna save this and let's close uh, the console, run this. Oh, cannot read property data off null. Well, that's something that makes sense, but which component said that? I'm gonna say parent. Is this a parent? It is, parent component. So that error was captured from my user's suspense. You see how it's important to actually be able to show the problems. Obviously this particular problem is not a great thing to show to our users, but hey, in development, we definitely care about this. And you know, obviously I made a mistake, so I didn't account for users not being online. I was able to get a, a user's value that's not properly formatted, and that bit me. Now I see exactly why, because I'm showing that error message. Okay, and it's only fair of me to try and fix my issue, my bug in the code for this, I'm going to users, and here's what I needed. If there's an error, then show that, but if not, then I need V else, and I'm gonna save this, go back to reload, and now I get something even more meaningful again. Now this error came from, again, from capturing the right error inside the fetch API. And finally, we see that we have problems fetching. Obviously, this is me being uh, offline. Let me go back online and try to fix that. And there we go, that works. You, my friend, you're now ready to use Suspense in Vue 3 applications. Now, if there's anything I wanna do is I wanna thank the Vue 3 core team for creating such an awesome framework. Um, if there is anything you can do, yes, you can. You can talk to your company to help support Vue. It's so easy to help support an open source library like Vue. You can set up easy recurring donations in as small fees as you want, but this amazing framework is helping you, and if it's helping you generate revenue, then it only makes sense to help Vue get better and bigger for your own benefit. Thank you for sticking with me. Next up is suspense with asynchronous loaded components. I find that an incredibly important issue. Uh, so stick around. Thank you for watching.